relationships are everything. Oh yeah. You know, personal and especially business. Relationships are everything. This business really wouldn't be where it is without the relationships. Not only cultivating these organic relationships, but maintaining them, you know, and operating from a, a place of integrity, not not chasing, you know, the, the highest payout. Faith, family, fun, freedom, and finances. It's time to pivot in your confidence, career, and compensation with the 5-Minute Career Hack Podcast every Monday and Thursday. Now, get ready for a special interview curated just for you. I have to first put out here how excited I am. I think a part of life and gratitude that I have, I want to make sure people know. So I think you all are going to feel that today. One thing, if you do not follow our show, please check us out, subscribe, and we know you're in for a treat today. So I want to introduce, you see this amazing couple that's in front of me. This is Marcus and Robin Scott, who are co-owners of Segment HR LLC. They established their business in February 2018, an SBA, women-owned small business that has provided specialized HR services to federal clients. So the Scots, if you're wondering about them as a couple, they met as freshmen at the University of Oklahoma. Yes, and have since been built, yes, that's still a boomer for all of the our sooners out there, have built both a thriving business and family. And I'm so excited to talk about parenthood and entrepreneurship and also celebrate the many things that they have done in their business. So I'll give a couple accolades so it's not odd as they're saying here, but I always make it awkward for my, for my guests because we have to give ourselves flowers. This is a hardworking couple, puts in a lot of time and want to make sure that they, they feel a little uncomfortable as we talk about what they do today. But just to give you all a little bit of background, you know, in regards to their actual, what they what they work on, we're going to answer a few questions today and talk about their business and actually go through some of the accolades that they've been able to achieve in the last couple of years. But without further ado, welcome, Robin. Welcome, Scott. Oh, um, and Marcus, Scott, how are you all doing today? Mar oh, thank you so much, Alicia. Yes, we're excited. So I'm going to let you all tell a little bit about yourselves. Obviously, I will chime in, but you know, I'm curious, tell the audience a little bit about you and the inspiration for your business. Tell them about Segment HR. Marcus always says that I, I get to go first. I don't see any reason why <laughs> this should be different. It's inspiration for Segment HR. You know, honestly, Alicia, it really started because I wanted more flexibility for my family. Once we, we have four children and once I was pregnant with the fourth child, who was now eight, almost nine, you know, I, I loved my job, but it was demanding. I'm, I'm a human resources professional. I still consider myself to be. And I really just grew weary of asking for time off or a child would be sick or have a sporting event or, you know, whatever the case. And just the act of asking someone for permission to spend time with my family or permission to go to a funeral. It just started to bother me, and I, I wanted to look to see what else was out there. And a friend of mine had broached the topic of consulting, and the idea of it scared me. I, mean, I was a federal employee. I liked to get in my check 15th last day of the month. You know, no hitch, we, no bonuses, but, you know, I knew it was steady and it was coming, and that scared me. But that really pushed me, you know, just trying to spend time with my family, with my husband, you know, Marcus, I'm going to steal his thunder, but he was working a lot. I'll leave it at that. He could tell his story. And I just started to do some research on what the next steps could be. Working in the federal space, there's not a lot of transferable skills in the HR discipline that I worked in with the federal government. So I, I started to just do some research on potentially being a federal contractor. I didn't really know what that looked like, but I upon my research, discovered that the federal government outsourced what I did every day as a job quite a bit. And it, it really just went from there, started to attend workshops and, and started small and cheap. We're actually still cheap, to be honest, but started small, billing my own hours, you know, as a 1099. I, I established the segment HR name just because someone gave me advice that, you know, if it ever grows big, you know, and, and Robin Scott LLC, you may not want to sell it like that or someone may not be willing to buy it. So, I, you know, just 
looked at logos and thought that that was the thing that I was supposed to do, but I was truly just a one person. Well, we were a two person LLC and I, I had to really pull Marcus in and he always says I voluntold him to join the company, but I'll leave it at that. That is, you know, kind of how it started. And then, you know, Marcus, you can kind of, you know, take it from there about, you know, how you willingly, willingly came along. Really? For the right. No, she, Robin always does a great uh, yeah, the explanation and intro of, to, to us as a, as a mayor and as, as, as business owners. Yeah. She, just to give you a little bit more of a spin to that, Robin came to me and said that, okay, with, with a calendar and said, okay, look, I'm going to put my quit day and fill it. This is going to be my quit day. And, you know, it was, it was about a year out, but you can imagine the, the pressure that, you know, sat on my shoulders at that moment in time. And, you know, initially I just, I didn't take it well, you know, and I, yeah, I felt like she had a, everybody wants to work for the federal government, not everybody, but a lot of folks, you know, they want, they, they aspire to, to be there and it's very difficult for her to do it. I know how hard she worked and how blessed we were to, to have her, you know, work for the federal agencies that she got the opportunity to work for and all the, friend, the great friends and all the people that we met, you know, through the, through the, through her time there. So it was, it was pretty challenging, you know, so, but, you know, after that subsided a bit, really started to settle in on that. And I still was like, okay, this is going to be your thing. I'm going to, I'll help from afar until that, you know, that yank became stronger and stronger. And, you know, and in, in my world, I was really getting burnt out, you know, it's just, and, you know, you, you know, in my world, I was a, a, a general manager in, in, in the field that I was in and I, I, you know, helped grow businesses, you know, from small units to making them bigger or, or bigger and making them larger or just taking an overall large business and making it perform, making it tick. And so, you know, it, working all the hours, 70, 65, 70 hours a week not seeing the family, even when I am, you know, quote unquote off on the weekend, I'm on the phone the whole, whole time. I mean, that, that definitely was, you know, very stressful, you know, and, and I didn't, you know, it, I didn't want to have that to be impacting my family the way I did, the way it did. So that got to me. And so one night I was like, look, let me just review one of your contracts, like for real. And so. <laughs> Cause it was for play at first. Oh, well, I was like, yeah. I, Good. Yeah. You do you, uh, you know, and this is about a year in after that quit day. Uh, and so I'm just looking and I'm like, yeah, you know, read some language in there, it, you know, really jolted me. And so I was like, whoa, you didn't tell me this part, you know? And, and so we, uh, you know, we were able to, you know, I was able to get some things going, develop the plan. I really didn't sleep for like three or four days after that, because I was just really energized at that, at that moment. Okay. You know, we're going to do this. And, you know, that's, that is really what got me to then leave my, you know, my career, my job that I, I was at for a good number of years for about, you know, and, and, and really commit to getting segment HR off the ground and man, the, the rest is history of, we're, we're really blessed. I want to, I want to add something to what, what he said, Alicia. So he says that I didn't tell him, you didn't tell me that part, you know, he didn't see that part. He wasn't receiving that part. But but in his defense, in hindsight, and we've talked about it, you know, just as the, you know, head of the household, the man of the house, you know, he talked about that instant pressure that he felt when I said, you know, one year out, this is the day I'm quitting. I've heard so many different answers, but how long should my resume be? Listen, a one page resume is ideal for candidates with less than 10 years experience. Now, if you have more experience, a two-page resume is absolutely acceptable. There are so many steps to creating a resume story that converts to getting your dream job. Sign up now for 5-Minute Career Hacks Resume Hacking Services and let us help you right now. You even get a one-hour consultation with our team. No if, ands, or buts, you know, so let's. we need to start planning. And he instantly, on his perspective, was felt the pressure. I'm going to, you know, have to make sure my family taking care of me alone. Whereas I was already seeing the vision. And no, no, you won't. We we're going to be able to do this. But he he took that on. That's just the way he's built. And I just something I just want to share with everybody about Marcus. He's just 
a rare breed. You really don't see people stay at the same job 20 years anymore. The job he was at, it was his first job out of college. We were a very young married couple. And he worked his way up. That's where he was for nearly 20 years. So he, it, it wasn't an easy ask for him. This is a place he was, that he worked his way up, you know, fresh out of college and, you know, up into these leadership roles. And yes, it was taking a toll on him, but he was very invested in that company. But from my perspective, I saw, you know, the, the person that, who I need to help grow this business, who better than him? That's what he was doing for another company. But he was just really locked in of, you know, gosh, our safety net is going to be gone. And I'm more the, the visionary, you know, out of the two of us because I have the liberty to be. You know, he's he's the man. And the way he's wired, like I said, it's just it's it's a very traditional approach that that's just the way he's wired. He He didn't see it that way. So. It really did take, you know, blood pressure going up and, you know, all those those pressures to say, OK, let me let me just look at this for real. Like he said. And and I was like, this is what I've been trying to tell you. You know, this is what I've been trying to tell you. I want to do this with you. You know, sure, I could hire someone else come in and, you know, be over the operations so I can be more the strategic visions and, and put in place. And at the time I was the technician as well because I was billing my own hours. But I saw what he was doing for this company. And I, I was just like, you can do this here. You don't have to know anything about HR. I, I know that part. You do this part. And honestly, from I was doing well billing my own hours. It was probably triple what my federal salary was. But once we just we sprinkled in his, you know, magic, whatever that whatever that is. It, it just catapulted us. He was able to put that energy, what he was giving to this other company. And that who we are thankful for, by the way. Oh, yeah. Thank, thank God, because that that's how we were able to really, you know, raise our family and, and have, you know, the, live in the neighborhood we wanted, the schools we wanted our kids to be in. So very thankful for that. But I, I just saw something in him. I knew what he was going to be able to do. I saw it a lot sooner than what he did. And I also saw what that job was doing to him. So I, I just thought it was a blend of, of both worlds. And I just needed him to see he's a numbers guy. You're going to probably hear him say that a few, few times. But once he crunched the numbers, he said, what, what am I doing? And I, I think within three weeks of that, we, we had our first big one, our first big contract. I had landed a few smaller federal agencies by myself. But I told him I'm just one person and I keep turning work away. I need to expand. I need to duplicate myself. I need to start bringing in some 1099s. We didn't we didn't have anything to pay someone as a W-2, no benefits at the time. But I'm, I'm limited. I'm one person. Imagine if you come in and we can really build this thing out. You know, I've been able to establish a structure and a reputation so far and we can build this out. And he he saw the numbers made sense. He didn't want to do anything that was going to jeopardize, you know, providing for his family. But he saw it and it was just the two of us. That was 2020. And by the end of 2021, fast forward, I, I think we had about 20 employees by then um, across probably, I think, about eight states at that point. 100 percent work from home remote doing, you know, working as federal HR specialists, supporting at that time, maybe about a handful of federal agencies. And and we just continued to build from there and really just pour into their experience and want to make this company into a place we enjoy working ourselves. That's phenomenal. I think a lot of things pulling forward. I think thank you all for sharing a what your skills were, right, Robin, around your vision and the technical skills that you had and relationship building and then also the confidence in yourself. Right. It took a lot to do that. And then Marcus, for you, when you're hearing you talk about like just your business savvy and understanding what you did, a lot of times when we coach people, they'll make have these results and don't know what they did. But you being able to talk about the perpetuity, right, of I know how to take it from here to here and being able to make this pivot with the both of you. But I think also what's really important when we think about, you know, families that work together, entrepreneurship, I think I love you all giving a very transparent view of how you were feeling 
because I think so much in the era now of people, you know, in these short clips and reels only were given the highlights, which that's all they had time for. But, you know, I always say kind of like poo-pooing on a nine to five, with you all being like, no, 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 this is bedrock. Like this was a foundation, A, for my skills, for us to be able to make this pivot and you all being very strategic to still balance your household because you had children that need to eat. And I always felt it was very different when you had to sit across the table from a child and explain why they hungry. Right. And so, you know, it's very different. You can have a vision and you can have all these great skills, but I think you all did a great job and I appreciate you you sharing that. So uh, I'm, I do want to highlight, like, Robin, when you think about, I'm curious, and Marcus, maybe you can answer this for her, of like, when you think about just your negotiation, you said it was voluntold, but there had to be some things she was doing, right, to even persuade you to leave this, what sounds like very successful career, right? And sounds like you were a person that was valuing the stability to take this chance. What what was the final thing? Outside of you looking at the numbers, what did you see in your wife that you were like, okay, you know what? I'm I'm going to join her in this journey. What was that? Uh, to be honest with you, it, it, it wasn't, it wasn't right, but it, mm-hmm. it was... I think God just said, okay, I'm going to move you in that direction. And, you know, for me, you know, and because that, that night I was, I was done, you know. Uh, so that's what got me to look at, you know, the, the contracts and read them, you know, read, read all the fine print and all of that. So, it, you know, it, it just, it, you know, wasn't, uh, it wasn't, it wasn't that, it, you know, it wasn't her because I, I didn't, I really didn't want, I wanted this to be her thing. And me to just help whenever she needed some help, you know, I'm a, I'm a man, you know, we don't, you know, we don't want to, I mean, I just put it up there. there. We, we, we don't want to. You felt about it. I didn't want to work, you know, with Robin on anything, <laughs> you know, I, yeah, I know how she is. We both are, you know, alpha personalities and we, we, we both want to lead, you know? Uh, so I knew that doing something like this. It was going to require me to to make some adjustments internally to to make it work because this is her field. But I knew from a number standpoint, I was just gonna you know really blow the what well, I was gonna you know do a great job in the in the business to make it grow. Yeah. But but personality wise, with her personality in mind, you know, well <laughs> that was gonna take that was gonna take some some doing some work, you know, but so a- after getting past that, I, then I really started to look and say, okay, how can I best be a best fit for her to, to grow this business that she's, you know, passionate about. She's, she's by far the leading expert. I would put her up against anyone uh, in this country, in this field. She is awesome and uh, amazing at what she does. She is, you know, I always tell her that as good as I think that I am with, you know, P&Ls and you know, business management, she is by far the guru when it comes to working with people and knowing what words to say and what make them, what makes them tick and what makes them to drive to, you know, because we, we have such great people that work for us, but they all work for us because of her. They gravitate to her. And so that's really the secret sauce to segment HR is Rob. That's awesome. So I heard him say that before. See, you see, look how we doing in this thing. What I'm doing is coming on here. Look at this. Thank me later. No, I'm just playing. Not, 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 not in that way. You know, I've not, I've not heard it put that way before. And in, in, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you, Alicia. It, it's something he said in the, the very beginning of this. He said, you know, it really wasn't her. It was, it was God. And he's, he's being, he's sugarcoating it a little bit. You know, being diplomatic. But I think the audience probably may get the gist that he's like, she's. You know, I'm an alpha personality. You know, I'm alpha. Marcus knew who he was marrying. I'm, you know, I've always been this way, and I'm, I'm not for everyone. You know, but I'm for him, and and he knows how to. I mean, this may not be PC to say anymore, but he knows how to handle me. He he does. He knows how to navigate my personality, and he knew he. I what was going through his head, and I can't remember the exact words he said. Was something like. I just know, you know, basically you're going to be too bossy, pretty much. We call that leadership. We call that leadership. Yes. yes. And right. he was concerned about like our marriage dynamic, but I had a dream 
And Marcus, you, you as soon as I start to talk about it, you're going to remember. But I had a dream that woke me up out of my sleep. It was two or three o'clock in the morning. And it was so powerful and clear that I woke him up to tell him about it. And in my dream, it was basically he was the driving force behind this company. This is before he started to even look at the contract and take it seriously. And I woke him up and he's freaked out like, what? And I, I said, I had a dream that you were the, the, you were spearheading this company. You know, this is not my company. This is our company. And you're a big part of it. It's, this was two or three o'clock in the morning. And I was so convicted in that. And Mark, I really just started to see him shine after then, you know, to just, I, I just think he was worried about me thinking he's trying to take something, you know, since it, it was my baby. But it's always been, you know, about our family for me, you know. And so I woke him up out of his sleep. That was a very clear dream. And most of my dreams aren't. Most of them, I don't remember them. But that was a very uh, clear vision, I believe, that came to me. And that's just a message that I wanted him to know. Yeah. Thank you. For, thank you for sharing. Thank you for all for uh, doing it. And, you know, obviously I was on the peripheral of this kind of journey for you. And as you're saying that, I, I remember, you know, that that light switch as well. Right. So as Marcus is talking about and you're talking about this dream, you know, it's just like a switch. Right. And I remember when you were like, I'm done with this and not even in a negative way, but just in a clear way. And it was a different energy about you where you were locked in and you were journaling and you were sharing and you just had copious notes and you were immersing yourself in, in reading and looking at millionaires and putting numbers. It was just like it was just flowing from you. So I can only imagine for Marcus how it was in that house to your point, as you were saying, this shoulder of like it was so much bigger than you. And I say that obviously not knowing, you know, what that would be. But even like the switch of saying, no, this is what I want to do. And all these people are helping to saying, no, actually, I need Marcus on my team. And you getting in there. And I remember that part, too, when you were very clear of like, no, I'm the CEO. <laughs> and then it changed into like, this is this is a us thing. And I don't want to do it with anybody else other than Marcus. So, you know, as you were saying that, too, I was kind of remembering that time frame over those two, three years of the evolution of, of segment HR. So. If you can walk the audience through either of you of like where we started, you know, and in regards to like this is what you thought your firm would be, kind of this midpoint as you brought Marcus in, Marcus, where, where you started and where it is, and then today, like the work that you all are doing in your clients, I think the audience will really benefit. You know, when when it started, I didn't envision this large company. It, it was more of, you know, I, I wanted to be an independent consultant, make, if I had just replaced my income, I would have been happy. I, I wanted the, I didn't really use the word freedom. I mean, I was savvy enough to know you you still, you know, have a boss somewhat. Your customers will be your boss, you know, whatever the case, people to be held accountable to, but just still, you know, having the flexibility to take on or decline whatever I wanted to have that flexibility. And that's the way that I thought that it would go. And I didn't really envision myself being a business owner or an entrepreneur from the very the very moment I met Marcus, and I'm talking 18 year old freshman, he's always wanted to be a business owner. He already had plans laid out to you know open a franchise or, or purchase a franchise Subway before it blew up, and and I was admired that about him because I was thinking not me, I just want a stable check, you know. And so I in the beginning I I thought that's what it would be, and and I don't I I try to be careful about using words of. That's all I thought it would be because it, even if that's all it was, it was enough. And, and anyone who's doing that alone, it, it's enough for them. But that is really where I thought that it would stop. But when COVID came upon us, 2020, as we all know, you know, we were under a global pandemic. That's when some doors began to open and windows that started to show me what the future really can look like. Not just for my family. I, I started to really look beyond my family and being able to bring opportunities to other people as well and and just impact to to other people through job creation started to creep in, but as well as having the means to be able to support some causes that that supported me when I was growing up, you know, as a child. 
And when COVID happened, it it just brought this perspective that I really don't have control over anything. All the control was taken. The, the plans that I thought that I had, they were in question at that point. So what ended up happening, and, and again, you about my faith, God fearing, I, I believe that God just just came to me and it's not, it's not an actual voice, but just more so a, a feeling of there's more, you know, there's more to do with this. And where it was a struggle to sell my services to the federal government and and really tout this remote 100 percent virtual work arrangement prior to 2020. And there were only a few agencies who were progressive enough to not need to see a contractor sitting on site in the building. 2020, they were forced to. They were mandated to. So during that time, this it was this really explosion of growth where I was really begging and pitching Marcus to join me because all this work was coming towards me. We need HR specialists to do this work. And here I was already positioned and I just needed to be able to bring more people on. And that's when I started to see, which was at that point a year and a half in, this can really grow to a large business. And I know that I can't do it by myself. And so, you know, that's that's where we started. And this began to build out. It just really started with a handful of people, put some posts out there so we could be ready. This was even this was preparing for the opportunity. Didn't have the contract yet, but I knew it was coming. I was that convicted, just as you said, you know, you saw that in me. I was that convicted that the work was coming. And so I created an employee handbook two years before I hired an employee just to have that structure ready when the time came. And and so put those announcements out there. I was looking for the skill set that I needed. We already had them ready. I was doing my own recruiting at the time. And so once we're able to get Marcus on board and, you know, we're pitching, you know, to become a subcontractor, that's really how we got our foot in the door was to be a, a subcontractor to a company who already had the federal HR contracts. And we were ready, you know, when, when Marcus got that meeting for us and they're like, uh, you know, it, we know it may take a little while to kind of get your your team into place. It's OK. Take your time. And we are we were ready. Marcus said, no, we, we have a team in place. And here's the resume. They're scrubbed, no names. And they were just blown away. And we had a contract signed within that week. And then, you know, it's the hard part. You have to perform. And we we wanted it to permeate throughout these these handful of employees who are all still with us, by the way, do your best job the first time. As our reputation grew, we began to be referred on both sides by these companies to other federal agencies and by employees. They they began to talk to their their friends who were still in the federal government. My company is small, but they are awesome. You may want to consider coming here. We hear they're calling you back into the office. You may want to want to consider working here. So that work that we were putting into uh, catering to our employees who are our priority customers, that sweat equity, we we saw that through fruition, you know, with them being putting their name on the line to invite friends and colleagues to come work for this small upstart company, you know, at, at the time. And uh, and and we've grown from there. And, you know, Marcus can, you know, speak to it from his perspective, you know, where we are now and how he saw that from his viewpoint. But it was truly meteoric when I look back. It didn't feel like it at the time because we were just so nose down and, you know, doing the work with our we had family responsibilities. My mother was living with us at the time, helping quite a bit. But it was meteoric when I look back and and also in retrospect, unusual, you know, an unusual and uh, the amount of growth that we've had. Mark well, thank you for sharing. So I want to one thing I always say, you know, at work is like by evidence of what. So I want to give as, you know, kind of quantify some of these things for the, for the audience so they can understand the amount and volume that you all are talking about and what your teams are doing to support various federal agencies, right? So like your dedicated federal staffing teams have obviously advised countless hiring managers, developed thousands of assessment questionnaires and job announcements on usjobs.gov, reviewed over 500,000 resumes and job applications, and have extended more than 5,000 job opportunities. And, you know, obviously talked about the process and the tens of thousands of personnel actions. But when you're talking about the amount of people, not only that you're employing with your firm, 
But when you think about just that growth and how many lives are impacted, not just the 5,000, but beyond that, it's just huge. So fantastic job. So today, obviously starting with one and two, how many employees do you all have today with Segment HR? We have 64 today uh, across 23 states and in Washington, D.C., and in growing, we're, we're, we're currently working on, it's RFP season right now. We're in fourth quarter on the federal fiscal year calendar. So this is when a lot of agencies are putting out RFPs, you know, trying to spend that contract money. And so it's, it's like college all over again, you know, overnight <laughs> being writing, you know, responding to these things. Last Thursday, and we were in the middle of Hurricane Barrel, but I, I started at 9 p.m. on writing out an RFP and I finished at 530 in the morning and was not sleepy, just completely fired up and locked in because that's job security for the segment HR employees who who support these contracts. And, you know, the government, you mentioned the things that we do, the government just outsources those processes to us because, you know, they're able, their internal HR teams are able to concentrate on some more of the analytical work, but they've outsourced that work to, to us. And it does have real human impact. Those are people who have applied to these federal jobs and they're waiting to hear back, you know, on their status. And the, these federal agencies are so bogged down, you know, without us, it takes six months to even let someone know what their status is. But our teams get in there and, and they're able to make those processes more efficient. And, and, and since we do what we can to make sure that they're having, you know, the best employee experience as possible. It then, in turn, the result is that they give quality deliverables to their customers, you know, to their end customers. So that's where we are now, 64 and counting. We'll, within the next two years, we'll, we'll be around, you know, 100 FTE. And we recently, for this year, we made the Inc. 5000 fastest growing companies. And that's, they, that's data driven. And that's between a three-year period, 2020 to, to 2023. I don't know where we're going to rank yet out of the 5,000, but I suspect in the top 100, because I believe we grew about 7,000% over, over a three-year period. So, but that's actually not the most proud accolade of segment. I mean, the growth is there because of how good our, our teams are. The, the most proud accolade is, you know, being voted as yeah, best workplaces. Because we worked really hard at that and we've not always been on that list, but we do look at their feedback, those employee surveys on ways that we can improve their benefits and their overall experience. So that and the, the higher vet uh, gold medallion. And that's really just to our commitment to ensuring that we, we ensure we have a workforce that includes veterans. And, and about 37 percent of our workforce are our veterans and disabled veterans who are, are doing this work and they're, they're not in entry level positions. They're in professional positions. They're, they have the career progression and the tenure here at Segment HR. So, you know, those accolades that more speak to the overall organization instead of the individual things like Inc. 5000 or female, top female founders, I'm most proud of the awards that really speak to the work that our team has done. Mark? Thank you so much. So that the, congratulations to both of you all. I mean, it's just so, you know, when you talk about just the rate of growth, it's also just amazing to to actually even know and be able to talk to someone on this platform that is, to your point, top 5,000 fastest growing companies, top 200 female founders in 2023 also recipient of the Department of Labor's most prestigious designation, right, around hiring vet gold medallion recipients. And so for those that are not familiar in this space, you know, those are just phenomenal things that you all have been able to achieve. So congratulations. Thank you for sharing that with us. So a question for you, because you all talked about the amount of work, obviously the grit that it's taken. When you think about balancing your relationship, your children, they, you have very active, talented children as well and extended families in your business, how, you know, do you have, how, how are you all doing this when you think about managing this? Can you share with the audience of like, maybe what, a, you share with one day in the season, what an average week looks like? What have you learned when you think about productivity or even like your own restoration and self-care? Because it's a season, right? Like you said, of where you are. So any tips, any learnings that you would share? Mm -hmm. Mark, Mark is it so funny. He, uh, he always defers to me. <laughs> that tells you a lot about the relationship dynamic. It is your turn, honey. 
Mark, is what is an average week look like? What what productivity tips you got for the people? Well, you know, so I have this this kind of rule that I have with myself with the business that don't try to reach out to me on Monday. All right. Don't try to call me. The business is gonna have me really, I'm going to be really involved in the business on Mondays because we recap what we've done for the previous week. You know, my payroll specialist runs several reports for me and things like that. We go over, you know, some, you know, some of the hours that were worked, you know, and, and then seeing what our production levels were from that previous week. And, you know, I'm, I'm just making sure we we're on track, you know, and 99% of times we are, but this last week, I don't know what happened. You know, it, 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 well, I do know what happened. I mean, we, you know, 4th of July, we had a lot of folks going out, you know, being out, enjoying their families. We, we definitely encourage PTO to take your PTO, take your time to be with your family during the holidays and whatnot. You know, that, that is extremely important to us. Uh, even with our benefit, our benefits, just one second on our, our benefits. I mean, we, that was a point of ours to make sure that we increased our, our, our improved our benefits year after year over year. When we first started, we were having benefits. They just they because they like rob it, you know. But we I knew that we were going to have to get some, you know, health benefits going. So the second year we had health benefits. We didn't have four hundred one k, but we had health benefits, and then we added four hundred one k after that. Then we started to increase our four hundred one k percentages, you know, every every year. So. So those, you know, th- those were extremely important, but so, but, but just getting back to, you know, just looking at all those reports and whatnot on, on Mondays, you know, we, you know, so I, I get all of that done and then we you know, look at the rest of the week and seeing what have to, you know, what the commitments are, but also on Mondays, there's things that just drop on you. Maybe a client is now saying, well, sorry, we're going to have to cut work off on such and such date, you know, of course that, that, you know, impacts the business, a, 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 a big deal. And so with, after that, I mean, you know, I'm just, you know, then, you know, looking to see how, you know, maybe I can get some things, you know, going with, you know, with, with my girls or getting some things, getting some time with, you know, some lunches with Robin, saying, okay, maybe, maybe we can get some here or there, you know, cause that's important, you know. You know, so we, we, there's been moments where we were just so, you know, knee deep in the business where we forget like, man, we, you know, we, we haven't done it. We haven't gone anywhere or, you know, did anything. You know, we had the hurricane, which that allowed us to, it, it was kind of bang as the hurricane, but it allowed us to really spend some time together as a family, you know, for, for you know, a few days while we didn't have power when we got in there, be, you know, those, those moments are, are important. But then also self-care is important. You know, we, Robin and I have been really, you know, we haven't been really challenging each other kind of, I don't, I don't, I don't think, but as far as, you know, you know, we walk every day, you know, and so, you know, she's looking and saying, okay, I've, I've lost, you know, you know <laughs> this much weight here. And I'm like, okay, well, I lost this much weight, you know, you know, and, you know, so we, you, we've both been challenging ourselves from a health standpoint to, you know, to, uh, to make sure we get you know, the daily exercise, getting the water, water and taking to our bodies, you know, getting the juices and, and veggies in our bodies that we need, you know, and for myself, I like to go into the sauna every, as much as I can, you know, as many times as I can get during the week. So, uh, you know, that's, you know, that, that just takes me through the week, you know, and, and then the weekend, some, something is always happening. You know, we, either my family or you know, our, our, our family, we're, you know, are, are, we're just doing something together. So, I mean, it's, it's, it's just kind of a routine thing, you know, and that it's, you know, try to keep it as simple as possible because the, during the week, the business really, you know, keeps us, you know, keeps us busy. Yeah, no, thank you for that, Marcus, because I think once again, around dispelling myths, right. And really setting people up for any pivots or transitions that they want to make, whether that's in life or a different phase. You know, a lot of nuggets that I took from that. Number one is being clear around what's first, right? On Mondays, establishing boundaries. They sometimes always say boundaries help me to, sh- it's not a restriction. It's so I can show up best for you. You can show up best for me. So love that you you started with that of like, hey, don't call me on this day because I'm not going to show up my best. Like, I'm not, I can't do that. I love that. And then just the average week of like, hey, it, it does take some time and how you all continue to recalibrate as a couple 
to say here is, you know, what intimacy can look like at this age and with balancing a business and children is really important. So your point, while it may be simple, it's those things and that repetition. So love that you all are, the Scots are, to your point, challenging each other around your hill and being able to restore and make sure you all have that energy. So I appreciate that. And it's hopefully when we think about, particularly in Black communities, when we think about, you know, our age group and where people are, they can receive, get to such heights of success and not be able to enjoy it because of those things. So really great, great nuggets there. So I appreciate that. Anything that you would add, Robin, there for any productivity tips for, for the married couples? Yes. You know, you, you do. You have to make the time. In our, we, we have two school age children. We have two young adult children as well, but they're still our children. They still need us. They still call. You know, our we have one son and three daughters. Our son is in California in school. Our daughter graduated last last spring, but she's, you know, lives here in town and is taking a gap year and still needs things. Our our two youngest girls, they're in a separate empty office right now, just hoping that they'll keep quiet. But this is a true family business. These these children, even the young adults, we call them children, they they've grown up quite a bit, especially the younger two, where this is all they know. And for the two older children, they've seen all of the phases you know, of of this, of our marriage, of the d- dynamic, you know, careers and and now a business. And they all, they really just fall in line in their own way. They support us, you know, with our older children. When they're in town, they're, they're helping with the younger children. Our oldest daughter just left here. She was here and, you know, she picked someone up from camp for us and, you know, is telling them to be quiet, you know, so we can do these things. And, you know, our son, when he's in town, he does the same thing. He spends time with his sister. And they know, they know when mom and dad are on calls to be quiet, you know, don't knock on the door. If if you see it closed, this is just a way of life. And a lot of people may think, you know, how do you separate business and family? We, we really don't. And honestly, that's okay with us because our business is personal for us. It, it's not only, you know, how we support our family, but it is personal for us to make sure that we're we're healthy. We need to be personally healthy, but we need to be healthy for our business as well, because there are a lot of people who are relying on us to make sound decisions and to be mentally stable and physically healthy, you know, so that we don't go down. I will say that we our business has progressed in a way where we're not needed in the day to day operations. You know, we really can focus on the strategic things in the business. So we'll continue to go without our presence. But it it is hard to separate it. And we're we're okay with not always having to separate it. I mean, there really are times we've we've been in bed and have jumped out of bed because an email came in and it's like, shoot, you know, our payroll provider did something wrong or whatever. We need I need to fix so and so's, you know, whatever, you know, and it's just it's okay. You know, we we really don't have a rule of what stays at the office because this is our life. And and we're OK with that. I mean, this is the best job I've ever had. This is the the most fun I've ever had. And, and I know on the outside, if someone's observing us, we may look stressed sometime, but we're really not. I mean, we're just engaged. I like working with Marcus every day. I don't know if he like working with me every day, but I like working with Marcus every day. I love working with you, too. And and so, you know, we do, we see each other all the time and we do, we like to have our time together, but we like to have our time apart too, because we see each other. You know, he, he, you know, go hang with his frat brothers or go to a cigar bar. Me, I like to go by myself and sit somewhere. But, you know, we, we have our own healthy things that we do apart as well, you know, to be, to be able to show up, you know, for each other and be okay to, to show up for our children as well. But, no, no, it's not always been easy. And it's not always been hard either. You know, we we have we have awesome children. We we really do. And it's not we do not take all the credit. We have they have great grandparents. You know, it's been a true village to help us through this and support us through this bit bu- through this business. Just as being a very young married couple, we needed that same support, you know, as as we were growing and, and becoming adults while being married. But this isn't this isn't anything that I would want to give up. We've even had discussions of whether we would want to sell. And, you know, this is this is for our family. You know, this is for our legacy. And 
you know, our, our oldest daughter wants to be a doctor, so she doesn't have interest in the business, but our son does, you know, so he's, you know, really trying to get his degree and, and go off and do all the great things he wants to do. But he does want to work in this business. My youngest daughter, I always tell her she's going to be the CEO one day. And she tells people that I'm going to be the CEO of Segment HR <laughs> at, at nine years old. But, you know, our business is, is personal for us, you know, and it's for us. Everyone's journey is different. We're OK with not having it separated. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that and for being great examples. I think, you know, obviously the audience is able to see why you all were voted one of the best workplaces. And I think you're doing it your way, which to your point is just fine. And thank you for sharing that because I think, you know, always I'm questioning to my point, like, what's the evidence of that? You know, it's like, who told you that it had to be that way? Right. And I've had, you know, it's been times and we talked to, you know, people that feel like they have to be a different person. Hence why we have burnout and we have, you know, imposter syndrome of people or code switching of, hey, I got to be this different person or I'm in this all whatever, right? Or I'm the only in this environment. So I can't talk about being a mom, being a dad, being a husband, being a wife. Like I got to be this in this sales environment, right? I got to be this in this, this environment. But you all have, you know, you eloquently shared that, you know, it's not a hat to take off. Obviously it's a hat to balance. Um, and there's something to glean from that and take forward of like who told us it had to be that way right so I, I think that's an amazing place for us to wrap here but before we do what we always do when we wrap up our our podcast is for you all to a is there anything you know if, if people want to follow you all or if there's any projects or even organizations that you support that you want to share with the audience that we can support and promote and then we'll get to I don't call it the lightning round but five words we're going to leave the audience with. But before we get to that, is there any projects or anything that you would like to share that we can support? Yes, we we do. There, there are two charities and causes that we support here at Segment HR and have even embedded it in our quarter uh, employee quarterly awards that gives our employees the options to donate to, to one of our uh, chosen charities if they don't have one of their own. But it's uh, Teach Not Punish, teachnotpunish.com which is a family resource center and from my hometown, Tulsa, Oklahoma, that really focuses on providing education resources to children who are impacted not only by poverty, but may have some intellectual challenges as well. Um, so that's one cause of ours, as well as the Wounded Warrior Program, which uh, caters to United States Armed Forces veterans who have been injured in war. And so that provides these wounded warriors with all types of resources, access to education, homes, clothing, you know, however they've been impacted with life, life functions. And I believe that website is a wounded, woundedwarriorsprogram.org. Um, but those are two causes that are, are really near and dear to our heart. Thank you so much. And we will definitely share those in the show notes for those that maybe are driving or cooking for the kids right now, running, working out, listening to this episode and, and all the platforms are listening to it. So we'll make sure that we do that. And then when we share it, we'll make sure we tag those organizations as well. Uh, so thank you for letting us be a part of those. And then now to our five words. Here's the treat. Folks are going to get to get 10 words today. We've got two dynamic leaders. So here's what we're going to do, though. Marcus, you got to go first because you would continue to say Robin got to go. So what are five words that you would leave for the audience today? Well, this one was kind of easy for me because I've been asked this before and, and I kind of live by it uh, and try to structure my work, my life around it. Uh, and that's faith, family, fun, freedom, and finances. You know, with finances being last, I feel like, you know, if you take care of that, the first one with faith, you know, everything else is going to fall into place. You know, so faith, family. Fun, freedom, and finances. Thank you so much, Mark. Robin. For me, it's not five words, but it, it is. This is a mantra that I I find myself saying at least once per day. Relationships are everything. Oh yeah. You know, personal and especially business relationships are everything. This business really wouldn't be where it is without the relationships. Not only cultivating these organic relationships, but maintaining them, you know, and operating from a, a place of integrity, not not chasing, you know, the the highest payout, but looking for opportunities that align with our values and maintaining those relationships. Relationships are everything. I tell any mentee that I speak with that relationships are 
everything. So, well, I want to thank you all for your time. Thank you for your leadership. I know it's not lost upon me that you all are, this is a very expensive call. I always say to my, I mean, this is an expensive meeting. So be it for you all to take this time after I know that. And I hope, I know that people are going to be blessed by this, but really uh, continue to pray for you all. It's been a, definitely a joy and treat for me to see this and really inspired. So thank you all. And for the audience, thank you for tuning in. We know that you were blessed by this. So if so, please share this with at least five people. And until next time, uh, be well. I truly hope you enjoyed this episode as much as we enjoyed doing it for you. However, it doesn't have to end there. Come on over to our Facebook group community right now for free. You're going to get exclusive content that we weren't able to include in this episode as well as past episodes. We've got challenges. We've got research. We've got lives. You name it. All for you. In bite-sized chunks so that you can continue this development journey. Go ahead, click the link right now in the description show notes, and we'll see you there.